Hi, this is Dr. Tony Cooper, and this is Life Without Baggage. In this podcast, I'll help you develop a stronger sense of self, develop firmer boundaries, and also learn how to lean into the gentle promptings of the Holy Spirit who can help you navigate life. I have dozens of bonus videos posted that will help you in these areas and also will help you develop stronger coping skills. In each of the program notes, there's a link where you can find my other media and also where you can find my books on Amazon. Just a reminder before we get into today's episode that this is not a substitute for medication or counseling. If you're having thoughts of harming yourself or another person, or if this material triggers you, please contact your doctor or a mental health specialist to help you with your concerns. Now here's today's episode. Welcome to this week's episode of Life Without Baggage. I'm going to talk the next few episodes on self-rejection and self-acceptance. The last podcast I did was on breakups, and it just seemed like a natural progression to talk more about how people can understand why they reject themselves, ways that they reject themselves, and ways to embrace self-acceptance. This is a big challenge for many people. So what I'm sharing today is out of my book, Life Without Baggage, the workbook. And I want to talk a little bit about depression and death wishes. So what I'm encouraging you to think about is we know that one of the Ten Commandments is thou shalt not kill. But most people don't think about if they wish that they were dead, if they think about hurting themselves, if they maybe do things to hurt themselves, cutting or burning, that this is a form of self-rejection. It's hatred against the self. Now, many times what happens is when we feel rejected, when we feel hurt, we may reject ourselves. But also what can happen is when we've been hurt, if we don't know what to do with normal anger, then women especially may turn it against themselves. It can become depression. It it becomes kind of a self-criticism. And I've talked a lot about self-criticism in the last few months, but I'm going to delve into this just a little bit deeper in terms of understanding self-rejection, which is deeper than self-criticism. I think almost everybody criticizes themselves. But people who have felt rejected, they often then reject themselves on some level. And this may not be something you've thought about. People that have been through trauma often blame themselves and reject themselves. It may not be evident because a lot of times people go to the opposite extremes to prove that they're worth something, to be liked, to be loved, to be admired. But a lot of times that the root of that is either self-rejection or a lack of self-acceptance. And I want to share this verse with you. It's Psalm 27, verse 10. It says, although my father and my mother have forsaken me, yet the Lord will take me up, adopt me as his child. And like we talked about last time, it's not just a mom or a dad, but it could be a sibling. It could be a romantic partner. It could be a close friendship. Then when we feel rejected, there are, maybe anger towards the other person, which is understandable. But a lot of times there is just like an attack on the self, the blame, the criticism, the self-rejection. I'm not worth anything. So it is easy for many people to slip into self-hatred or self-rejection when our hearts have been broken, when we've been betrayed, when we've been abandoned. But if you've lost interest in living or if you've begun to to hate yourself, then we need a more accurate view of our value and worth. And we need to understand sometimes to go back to recognizing the extreme 
value, the uniqueness, the special attention and love that God has for us. And sometimes if you build from that, your sense of belonging, your sense of identity, your sense of worth, many times you can start there. So it is useful to forgive yourself. It is useful to forgive others. And if you've listened to me at all, you know that forgiveness is a choice. It's not a feeling. And it also doesn't mean you should trust the person. Doesn't mean you necessarily should be around the other person. But we can be set free from pain that we carry, from ties that we carry with us by forgiving and releasing. It's not easy to do, but it's very freeing. So I want to read some scripture to you about the special and unique value you have to God. It may be hard to believe this, but this is what he says. Zephaniah 317 says that he sings over you. Isaiah 62, 3 says that you are a precious jewel that he has chosen and he has purchased. I don't know about you, but Jesus is the only one that's ever died for me. So how much he must love you. If you were the only person on earth, he still would have died for you so that you can have freedom and purpose and joy in daily life. Psalm 25, 14, this is one of my favorite verses. He shares his secrets with me when I walk closely with him, when I obey him. A lot of the insights I get from my books, my podcasts, they're from the time I spend communing with the Lord because he wants us to share his understanding just like you share special things with your friends, you share insights with them that you don't share with a stranger. Likewise, the Lord has a special connection with you that he wants to cultivate with you. And you do that by spending time with him. Isaiah 49, 16 says, he has your name tattooed on the palm of his hands. We get tattoos of people that we love, our children, um, a relative, a romantic partner. He has you tattooed on his hand. Psalm 139.13 tells us you are not an accident. I don't care whether you were planned or not. You were not an accident in God's plan. Psalm 139.17 and 18 says that God thinks about you day and night. He knows how many hairs there are on your head. Uh, That's in Matthew 10.30. That he has a purpose for you. That's Jeremiah 29.11. A purpose that will give you joy. Not just duties like a robot, but purpose that gives you satisfaction and joy. Colossians 2.9 says, In Jesus, I have the fullness of his Holy Spirit. Colossians 2.14 says that in Jesus... All my failure and sin is blotted out. Here's two more scripture. These are from the Passion Translation. This is on page 29 in my book, Life Without Baggage. And you did not receive the spirit of religious duty leading you back into the fear of never being good enough, but you have received the spirit full of acceptance enfolding you into the family of God. That's like a hug. It also says in Hebrews 13, 5, I will never leave you alone, never. So I know people are not reliable. They may abandon you. They may reject you. They can betray you. But Jesus always wants the best for you. And as you follow him and as you lean into him, he can help you build that self-acceptance. But you don't want to drag that self-rejection with you. So you know how I like to guide people through a prayer. So I'm going to guide you through a prayer if you have had trouble with death wishes, self-rejection, with uh, cutting or burning yourself or any other ways where you have kind of slipped into that self-rejection because of things that you've been through, trauma or disappointments, so many things, so many things that are hard for people in this day and age. So I'm going to guide you through a prayer. 
and I'm going to pray some blessings over you. So Lord Jesus, I repent that I have rejected myself, even though you say that I matter, that I have purpose, that I have worth. You bought me. You paid for me. You pulled me out of the mire. You pulled me out of the sewage of life. And you put my feet on a rock. And you say that I'm important, that I matter, that I'm lovable, that I'm smart, that I'm good, that I have a place where I belong. So Lord, I release to you the bitterness and anger and sense of rejection that I have carried. Because it says in Isaiah 53 that you died for me so that I could have a sense of well-being. So I ask you to take that sense of rejection and any anger and any bitterness and and any self-pity into your body on the cross. And I ask you to fill me with your peace, with your joy, with your sense of belonging. Help me to interrupt negative, critical thoughts and to embrace the truth about who you say I am until it becomes automatic and natural for me. So now I'm going to pray a blessing for you from Isaiah chapter 25. Again, this is one of my favorite passages. I have a few that I go back to over and over. So talking about Jesus, he will destroy on the mountain of the Lord the covering of the face, the mourning, the wretchedness that is woven and spread over nations and over individuals. He swallows up that sense of death And he wipes away every tear and every reproach. So it can be said, behold, God in in whom I have waited and hoped, who saves me. I am glad and I rejoice in his love and salvation. So I paraphrase that a little bit. It's out of Isaiah 25. And I've done some in-depth explorations of those passages in in other podcasts. But I bless you to change how you view yourself, to put away the negative thoughts, the self-rejection, and allow the Lord to fill you with his light, with his love, with his peace. It's a process, but you don't want to entertain the thoughts or the behaviors that strengthen that stronghold of self-rejection. You want to release that. You want to put it aside and embrace who Jesus created you to be and who he says you are, regardless of what other people have done or said. We're not going to let pain or rejection define us. So this was Life Without Baggage. I'm Dr. Tony Cooper. Thanks for listening. And if this helped you, share it with a friend. Talk to you next time.